Hi, I bring you greetings from the little town of Zirconia, North Carolina, nestled in the mountains of Western North Carolina, which constitute part of the Appalachian mountain range. It's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy four year period. And I'm a forgiveness teacher. I get questions right and left. Lyndon, how in God's name can we forgive this or that? Are you reading the newspapers? That is unforgivable. I hear these comments a lot. I say them myself. I struggle. It's been a hard time. But someone much greater than I once said that there is no future without forgiveness. Archbishop Tutu, Cape Town, South Africa, Nobel Peace Prize winner. There is no future without forgiveness. Because if we don't find a way to break the cycle of violence and revenge, there won't be a future. When we find a way to break the cycle of violence and revenge, we are able to restore dignity to one another. Nelson Mandela was asked after he was elevated to become, uh, after he was elected to be president of South Africa, why he didn't settle scores with those who treated him so badly. Why didn't he seek to get his revenge on those who treated him so poorly, putting him in prison for 27 years of his life, 17 of which were at Robben Island. I had the opportunity to visit Robben Island. I've been to the cell where he lived. I can empathize with those who ask him the question why he didn't seek to settle scores. It's an appalling and undignified experience. But he said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew that if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. So forgiveness doesn't mean we let people off the hook for doing bad things doesn't mean we give up our right to pursue justice. It means that we take an assessment. We consider the stuff that we carry around emotionally. And if it doesn't serve us to let it go, what could possibly be the benefit of remaining angry at someone 20 years after the fact? Anger is important in the short term, but over time, it's like the acid that eats away at our insides. So I wish you uh, the beginning of a good new year. May 2021 be as good as 2020 has felt bad. There are many lights on the horizon, many things for which to be grateful, many opportunities to serve and to pursue and to acknowledge the dignity in every human being. Regarding our enemies, one of the brightest lights in our country put it this way, Reverend Barber, the Poor People's Campaign. He's a pastor here in the state of North Carolina. He's one of my heroes. He said that if we can't look into the eye of our enemy and see the possibility of redemption, we're walking the wrong path. Powerful words. I wish you the very best. What a wonderful gift to our community and um, a message to our community. forgiveness and how we can be in right relationships with others through
forgiveness. And I hope all of you will send a message to Lyndon Harris if you see him. He couldn't be here with us this afternoon, but I, you can carry his message in your heart. And when you get a chance, let him know how powerful that message was. So we'll give him a round of applause for the video record. Please give a round of applause to Lyndon Harris for his powerful, powerful, or hearts for his message. What a wonderful gift to all of us.